What's up guys, Brown here and welcome to today's Raid Shadow Legends video, the next one on this short list of top champions. Instead of doing the rares this time or the epics, right? We did the 30 endgame rares, the 20 game changer epics. Now we're going to do the 10 godlike legendaries. The ones that if you get on your account, you will be doing extremely well and everybody will want to have your account basically. So if you have all 10 of them, then you've basically won the game. Um, but uh, I know I have only about two of them. I would love to have them all, but uh, as we all know, the RNG is never on our side at least that's how it seems for me so anyway we do have a lot of information to cover and um it is not necessarily the top 10 that you see right here okay on my tier list i think some of them do a better job of really becoming a like a game changer as well right if you do have them some of them have similar roles which is why like i'm only only sorry going to choose one of those i'm not going to choose the 10 uh legendaries that all do the same thing i try to mix it up a little bit so they're not necessarily the ones you may agree with but when i look at it in the, the total pool of champions these are the ones that i would really really like to have currently in 2020 to allow me to have some of the best clan boss teams be in platinum arena no problem be able to do all the dungeons within like a minute or a minute and a half right so Pay attention, there's once again a lot of information. So let's get going. The first one is going to be Sifi, the Lost Bride, for multiple reasons. I think this skill right here being probably the craziest in the game in terms of, of support, being able to block debuffs, increase defense, increase speed, and fill the turn meter by 15% on a three turn cooldown. This is next level. Uh, obviously, she also has the sleep on her A1, which is very annoying to deal with, and also has the single target revive with a full turn meter, uh, which is also going to grant a 50% increase attack and 30% increase crit rate. Not to mention one of the best auras in the game, 80% ally resist in all battles. Uh, also has the ability on her passive to remove freeze and fear debuffs, right? It's only a chance, but it's still very annoying because it renders your CC champions sometimes kind of obsolete against her. So you're forced to have to rethink your strategy. And she's the partner of Rodos. Rodos is also on this list. And I think he's there because Sifi is there, right? Rodos as, uh, by himself is actually really, really good, but I think he really shines in the arena specifically if you have Sifi, all right? But uh, a Rodos in dungeons, a Rodos in the clan boss is also very good. A Rodos by himself in the arena is also very, very strong. This guy was a fusion, which is why I like him so much. I managed to get him super excited. I hope you guys did as well. If you didn't, then hope that you get him from a shard, right? But what he has is kind of like this setup where he just keeps going with the extra turn. You put him in a relentless set, uh, will ignore 75% of the target's defense, which means you don't necessarily need that decreased defense uh, debuff on the enemies in the arena. That's really, really good because you can then build a kind of like a tanky team. And this guy is gonna wipe the floor with basically all the enemies. Also has a way to increase his own health so that is like a built-in lifesteal system really really strong and then of course the uh passive which makes him absolute uh beast basically is that he cannot die in one shot you got to take him out in like let's say two shots if you stack huge shield on him over uh 50 of his health then you need to kill him in three shots really really good also grants him an extra turn so obviously rodos is on that list all right let's keep going the next one is going to be krisk the ageless this guy has such a complicated kit, but it, it's so good everywhere, basically, right? Even in the clan boss, in the arena, he's really hard to deal with. But with the ally protection, continuous heal, the passive that basically adds decreased defense and decreased attack on the attacker, as well as a crazy shield, one of the biggest in the game, also has an AoE provoke, and then a 60% increased defense on himself, increased speed on all the enemies, and then has an AoE A1. You know, what else could you want from this champion? I'll tell you, he's defense and he's void. So that's even better. Look at his stats. Look at a total defense. This guy is nuts. I really, really like him. I would love to have him, but uh, I don't. I don't yet. I pulled one for someone, but not on my account. Anyway, let's do the next one. It is going to be Hegemon right now. Uh, if you don't have Hegemon in the Platinum Arena, you're almost certain that you won't, will not maintain your spot. You can maybe uh, manage to finish in Platinum Arena at the end or like in the last hour before it resets, but that's usually because you're just playing the refresh game and fighting the easy battles. But if you have a Hegemon, 
you're usually able to stay in the platinum arena relatively well. This guy is so good because he goes first every time he goes first and that is a game changer. It allows you to follow up right into this AOE skill right here, which has the block cooldown skill debuff for two turns, 50% increase, uh, decrease attack, sorry, as well. So a great CC champion and you're guaranteed to go first. What else could you want from a champion? Also has a decent aura, but that's not usually what he is used for, right? Let's move on to the next one. One that I am sure you guys either have as of now, or we'll get eventually. I'm so glad they put, put this champion as a free champion, okay? Arbiter is fantastic. She is such a great prize for, let's say, completing the game, or like the, the end game, right? But then you can go on, right, with the faction wars and whatnot, but still, what a prize to have on your account when you're able to uh, do it all. So obviously what we really like about her is this skill right here, 30% increased turn meter, 50% increased attack on all allies, and then also heals them if they have less than 50%. Follows up well after this skill right here if some of your allies go down. They're going to be revived at 35% HP, they're going to get a uh, turn meter increase of 20%, the extra turn, then she follows up into this, boom, you're right back at like over, what, 50%? HP if you uh, work with some of the masteries and then you're good to go. You just had like a ton of turn meter increase. Uh, really, really good. She's good in the clan boss. She's good in all dungeons. She's good in the arena. She's good basically everywhere. What a fantastic champion. So definitely uh, hope that you guys have her already or working towards her. Let's do then the next uh, magic champion. It is uh, one of the best nukers in the game. Also has a stun built in. It is Trunda Guilt Mallet. She's relatively new, but um, I think her multiplier on this skill is just off the charts. If I'm not mistaken, this is one of the hardest hitting uh, skills, sorry, in the game. And with the stun built in, which you do not need to book to get above 70%, and 70%, 75% being the highest you can see right now on a champion, it's really, really good, okay? Uh, she also has the HP burn built in, also, ha also sorry, has a stun built in on her A1, and then she has this basically here, which makes her very uh, tanky, like re resistant if she has a lot of stun on the enemies, okay? So uh, right now, I am seeing her a lot in the Platinum Arena, and for those reasons. All right, let's move on to one that I do have. Really excited. Can't believe I pulled this guy on my account. It is the Bad Elkazar. This guy used to be not that great last year, but he was buffed like two or three times, if I recall correctly. Obviously, the AoE Hill A1 is one of the best in the game. Then he has this skill right here, which is a remove all debuffs on all allies two continuous heal, and then two poisons on everybody. And notice that it is a place, right? So as long as you have the right amount of accuracy, you cannot get a weak hit. This is going to work. It is so, so good. But what makes him even better is the passive that increases your damage by 20% on targets under poison debuffs, okay? So he is really, really sought after for the clan boss, but he's also great in a lot of dungeons. And I'm thinking we're going to see a lot of him in the upcoming tag team arena. All right, let's get going. And then the next one is, of course, one of the best poisoners in the game, the Draco Morph. This guy um, is, man, I'm... This skill right here, number one, is one of the best in the game. There's only two other, two champions that can basically do this, him and Venus. It's on a three turn cooldown, which what makes it really, really good. The Rosin also has this, but say it's a single target. This guy has the ability to do it on the AOE. So um, in all dungeons against the clan boss, it's really, really good, right? Everybody wants a Draco Morph. This guy was also buffed not too long ago. He used to be not that great. And then he has the attack four times at random. Each hit plays a 5% poison debuff for three turns, okay? so. For that reason, definitely one of the best. Also has a really, really strong hitting A1. So he deals a lot of damage against a clan boss. Everybody wants the Draco Morph, like I said. I hope I get mine soon. All right, next one, almost done, is of course Valkyrie, which I think is the best counterattack champion in the game uh, because it's built in with the shield, which scales off of her defense. And it can get huge. Uh, to a point where you almost do not need lifesteal if you have, like, let's say, a full uh, set of stalwart sets on all your champions against the clan boss. 
the shield is able to eat all the damage and then you can keep yourself going with like some of the uh, continuous heals right uh, of course also on a three turn cooldown which is what you want for a counter attack but she also has this really good passive right here which increases her turn meter for every buff placed on enemies uh, really annoying to deal with in the arena as well as the faction wars level 21 if I'm not mistaken she's there really really uh, annoying her aura isn't the best because it's only for faction wars but still she definitely has a spot on my list today uh, also has a decent a1 but that's not typically what we really like about her okay so let's do the last one also relatively new duchess duchess is such a good support champion she can be used basically everywhere she is annoying to deal with in the arena she's kind of hard to kill uh good stats overall relatively fast as well what we really like obviously is all her buffs you have the block debuffs the increased attack the perfect veil we also have a veil again and the continuous heal as well as the revive all dead allies with 70 percent hp okay so really really good speed aura which is really good for the arena but not the best but still really really nice as well as the ability to decrease the damage taken by aoe attacks by 25 percent and 15 percent from bosses so guys overall this champion is the ultimate kind of like uh tank not by herself but she makes your team very very tanky by default because of this and we know that the buff to the veil or perfect veil which means champion takes uh, reduced damage now is even better so guys I would love to have a Duchess, but I still do not either. So, uh, like I said, I have some of them, but I definitely don't have all 10. I want to know which ones you guys have and which ones you guys really, really want right now. Uh, for myself, it's the Arbiter, the Battle, Kazar, and the Rhodos. The rest, I'm just going to have to wait because I don't think we're ever going to have any of those champions as part of fusions. We were really lucky with the Rhodos. At, at first, I think people thought he wasn't that great, but then, you know, people built him up. And because of the past, he turned out to be a really fantastic and same thing like i said the arbiter the fact that you can get her within the game i think it's a good move by plarium but i think we need more of these more of these legendaries that really make a difference in the long run so anyways guys that's going to be it thank you so much today for watching the video again let me know what you think in the comments below and i will catch you later